In chapter 8, section 5, we're going to split it up into two parts, and tonight we're just going to talk about the law of sines. So by the end of this lesson, you should be able to use the law of sines to solve triangles. Now up to this point, we have only solved right triangles. Today we're going to figure out how to do any triangle. So in order to do that, we have to calculate trig ratios for angle measures up to 180 degrees, as opposed to only up to 90. Because remember, in a right triangle, it can only add up to 180, and we've already used 90 of it up. So if you have a really, really obtuse triangle, these two angle measures are going to be super tiny, and this can get as close to 180 as possible. And we can use a calculator to find these values. So let's just type some of these in our calculator. So if we type in the tangent of 103, we end up with negative 4.33. Now remember, this is a ratio. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. And somehow we ended up with a negative number. We're going to talk tomorrow in class how that's possible. And then cosine of 165 gives us negative 0.966. And remember, again, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So you end up with a negative, and we'll talk about that tomorrow. But sine of 93 is 0.999. And remember, sine of any angle is opposite over hypotenuse. So keep that in the back of your mind. We'll need to take sine, cosine, and tangent of numbers bigger than 90, but we'll talk about why the negative part works tomorrow. Um, and we're actually going to do this part tomorrow also. This is a proof of why the law of signs work. I'm just going to tell you what it is in a video, do some examples with it, and then we'll talk about this tomorrow in class. So here is the law of signs. It says that for any triangle ABC, if you have side lengths of A, B, and C, that the sine of angle A divided by the side length A equals the sine of angle B divided by the side length of B, and the sine of angle C divided by the side length C. So remember, all of these are side lengths. And up top, because it's the sine of an angle, it's the ratio of an angle. So we can use the law of sines to solve a triangle if I am given two angle measures and any side length. So let's say I have angle, angle, and a side length. Or it can be angle, angle, and a side length in between. So that's why angle, side, angle, or angle, angle, side works. And then also if I'm given two side lengths and a non-included angle measure. So side length, side length, and this angle. Or side length, side length, and this angle. So remember before we said ASS doesn't work. It does for the law of sines. So, find the measure FG, round lengths to the nearest tenth and angles to the nearest degree. So when we look at this relationship, what it's saying is that the sine of this angle divided by the opposite side equals the sine of another angle divided by the opposite side. So that's what we want to do here when we look at this. We want to take the sine of an angle and divide it by the opposite side. And then take the sine of another angle and divide it by the opposite side. So what we're looking for here is FG. This is the part that we don't know. So we have the angle that's across from it. So that's what we're going to use. So we know that the sine of angle H divided by FG has to be exactly equal to the sine of angle F, that's the other angle we're given, divided by the, the uh, side across from it, which is GH. And then plug in what we know. We know angle H is 32 degrees. FG is what we're looking for, so we'll make that an X. Angle F is 39, and GH is 40. And then this just becomes a proportion problem, but we can do some cross multiplication. So X times the sine of 39 is exactly the same as 40 times the sine of 32. 
And then I'm going to get x by itself before I type anything into my calculator. So divide both sides by the sine of 39. So we end up with this x that we're looking for is 40 times the sine of 32, all divided by the sine of 39. So be careful when you type this in your calculator. When you type in sine, it automatically throws up a parenthesis. So when we type in sine of 32, make sure you close the parenthesis before you hit the division bar to type in sine of 39. If not, it's going to take the sine of the sine of something, which we don't want it to do. So 40 times the sine of 32, close parentheses, divided by the sine of 39, close parentheses. And we end up with 33.7. So that's how big FG is, is 33.7. So let's try another one. Now in this one, we're given two side lengths, one angle, but we're asked to find another angle. If you noticed in this one, we were given two angles, one side length, and we were asked to find another side length. So this is going to look very similar. Remember that your ratios take an angle and the side that's opposite to it. So if we're looking for angle Q, we want to take the sine of angle Q and divide it by the side that's opposite, which is RP. And that has to be equal to the other angle we know, which is 51, divided by the side that's across from it, which is RQ. So then plug in what we know. We know that RP is really 6 and RQ is really 8. And then again, this turns into a cross product problem. So 6, ti six times the sine of 51 equals 8 times the sine of angle Q. Divide both sides by 8. We get that 6 times the sine of 51 divided by 8 equals the sine of angle Q. Now remember, in order to find an angle measure, we have to take the inverse sine. So I'm going to take the inverse sine of all of this stuff. So we take the inverse sine of this stuff, those cross off, and we're just left with angle Q. So what I'm going to type in my calculator is the inverse sine of 6 times the sine of 51 divided by 8. And remember, close your parentheses as you go. So inverse sine of 6 times the sine of 51, close your parentheses, divided by 8. And you end up with 35.65 degrees. And because it says round to the nearest degree, we'll call it 36 degrees. And that's it. You should be able to use the law of sines to solve triangles. Tomorrow we will prove this, and we will prove why we can have angle or trig ratios that are negative. So negative trig ratios. So if you have any questions about this stuff, make sure you write it down, and we can go over it tomorrow in class. Have a good night.